Okay, well if you thought measuring salinity was exciting, it gets even better because the next job you have in this lab is going to be to measure the amount of dissolved oxygen in a set of water samples. Does measuring the amount of oxygen in water is a little bit complex chemically. Uh, we have to use a procedure involving what's called a titration, which basically means that we're going to measure the amount of oxygen molecules in water by reacting them with another su substance. And when that reaction is done, we'll know how much oxygen is in the water. The procedure involves using a burette, such as this, uh, filled with a solution uh, called th uh, sodium thiosulfate that, re that will react uh, with the oxygen that's in our water samples. The more of this solution that we use to complete our reaction, the greater amount, the amount of oxygen in the water. Once we figure out how much oxygen is in our samples, then we get to the fun part, which is to try to interpret our data, to try to understand why some parts of the ocean might have more oxygen and other parts less, and what kinds of factors control why that is. One important thing we're going to do that you'll see in the next demonstration here is how to avoid the most common error that students make when they're measuring oxygen using titration. You can see this funny sample here with the orange color. Um, the reason why it looks that way is that this water has, we've done some chemical um, procedures on this water to do what's called fix the oxygen that's in it. And what that means is that the oxygen in the water has been bound up with another molecule. That molecule happens to contain iodine, which is why it has this color. The reason we did that is that we're going to be able to measure that iodine-containing molecule doing a chemical process that's called a titration. There's a substance in this burette right here called sodium thiosulfate, and the more of this stuff that we use in order to make a color change happen in our fixed sample, the more oxygen is in the sample. And we'll be able to calculate accurately how much oxygen is in the sample using some simple math. But I'm going to take you through some steps in the titration so that you can do it accurately and uh, actually and, then, and get some good data. So the first step, and all of these procedures are explained in your lab book and we'll go over them in lab. The first step is that we'll accurately measure out exactly 50 milliliters of our fixed water sample in a 50 mil graduated cylinder and then transfer that sample to this little triangular flask here that's called an Erlenmeyer flask. Now I put my sample under here and the key here is I'm going to dribble this sodium thiosulfate solution into the flask and as that happens what's going to happen is I'm going to notice that the color of the solution is going to go from a darker orange to a lighter orange or, or a yellow. And it's very important that you not go too fast with this procedure because the number one error that students make in this part of the lab is that they do what's called overshoot. They use more solution than they need to to make the color change happen and that will overestimate, you'll end up overestimating the amount of oxygen in your sample. So I repeat, do not overshoot. You will overestimate the oxygen in your sample and get bad data. Do you see how the color has changed? The white card helps us see this. The color has changed now from dark orange to more of a lighter yellow. Now as we get, what we want to do is titrate this sample until it goes completely clear but only just to that point. In order to let us see that color change better, as we get toward the end of the titration and your sample is the color of, say, you know, light, Bud Light or something like that, we're going to add some starch solution to the sample. And all that does is it allows us, it's going to allow us to see the color change a little bit more easily. So by adding this starch solution, I am actually going to be able to darken the color of my sample and I'll be able to see the change to the light color more readily now. So you see my sample is now darker and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to titrate it to the point where it goes clear but not a drop more. And as, I, and, and as it gets very clear I'm going to go quite slowly just a little bit of solution at a time using that white card to help me see if it's gone clear yet. And I'm almost there now. You can see the solution is almost perfectly clear. There might be just a little bit of, of blue precipitate in there from the starch. and maybe just a little bit more and there, that's it okay so now I have I can measure the amount of solution that I used and do a simple math equation to calculate the amount of oxygen in the sample that's how you do a titration to calculate dissolved oxygen in a water sample